I didn't do it last part, but look at the back of this 10 car. Look at that and tell me there's not a face there. I'm going to have to draw it, and then we're going to... There, There is a face. My imagination... It, it's right. It There is a face there. I, I, I feel like I'm losing my damn mind, but there's a face there. Hey guys, what up here? Welcome back to NASCAR 2003 Season Motor Race 336. We're going to Vegas. Johnny Benson rant aside, not really rant, just my insane old man vision is uh, persisting itself. We got Vegas. This is our paint scheme. Everything is going okay so far in the championship battle. We won at Rockingham, but it was more of a last lap battle and lap traffic saved us. Marlin, point leader, Mark third. We are eight points back. Johnson, 15 back. Still insanely tight battle, but this is still very early in the season, so a lot can change. So, Jimmy Johnson try-harding with laps led so far. That I'm, I'm noticing. But we got Vegas. Vegas is notoriously difficult in this game, so much so that we are putting in a custom setup to at least be semi-competitive. Because if I did not use it, if I was just using straight-up default setup, I'll be running like 40th the whole race. And that would not be fun to watch, nor will be fun to play. So... I give myself a little bit of a bone. And also, Vegas is just one of those weird anomalies with this game where it's just extra hard at this track way more than others for some weird reason. So, anyways, uh, before we jump into it, thank you to my tier 2 Patreon people as well as my YouTube member support channel, Purse to get early access videos and channel emails for our live stream. Thank you so much. Uh, it, it, it's it's a weird because there's so many names, so many faces. I had to add in text. I just It's just the text of the names now because it, there's just, what, 73 now? It's it's too too insane. Also, I changed the game's uh, display from uh, widescreen to this, so it should look a little bit better. I'm sure I'm gonna get comments on that at some point for the first two races because I recorded those without do changing that. So now it's more consistent from what the Thunder 2000 mod is, and then this. So, ran tangents aside, let's get into it. Let's roam and yom and go. I ran so much Vegas races in the last week that I'm almost quite sick of it. I did a live stream of it. I did a video. Again, doing this race at a full distance to win it. And now we're doing this. So, a lot of Vegas. So, car set up. I already actually have all the saves. So, that's good. We have all that situated. I was doing some practice races off camera. But that's basically the main just, uh, adjustments. Tire pressure, downforce, suspension. I had the wedge up around. In gear, uh, gear ratio, I just changed the fourth gear from a 98 to a 108. And that seems to be pretty good. So... Got all that situated. We're just going to have M, R, N, and gang take it away. I when I was I was looking at my editing when I was I was watching it, and I, I said M, R, N, like, really fast, and it almost didn't even sound like I was saying it, so I wanted to really emphasize those acronyms. So, there, we got that situated. NASCAR Winston Cup Racing has hit the jackpot this week as we come to Las Vegas Motor Speedway for today's UAW Daimler Chrysler 400. I'm Joe Moore, along with Barney Hall. We'll be bringing you all the action right here on the MRN. Barney, what can you tell us about this racetrack? Well, the good thing about the tracks like this, there's plenty of room out there to avoid accidents. I look for these guys to have a pretty clean run, and we probably won't see the big one that we talk about at some of the other tracks. In 1989, Bobby Hamilton got his first start in NASCAR as part of a production for a stock car racing movie. Well, that's one heck of a way to break already. onto the circuit. Wasn't too long before he was racing full time. He won Rookie of the Year honors in 1991. With over 25 seasons under his belt, Ricky Rudd is NASCAR's most experienced full time driver. It's hard to believe, but he got his first Winston Cup start back in 1975 at the age of 18. Since then, he's been in the top 10 in points more often than not, and he's still at the top of his game. You gotta believe Kurt Busch would love to win here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Well, I'm sure he'd like to win just about everywhere. But he grew up here, and anytime you come home, you want to do well in front of the hometown crowd. Minus the Bobby Hamilton segment that we already heard before. I just always appreciate the fact that whoever I'm driving, it feels like I'm a part of this story of this world. And they just, I just, I miss this. I miss this so much where there's like audio files of this game where there's like 23 minutes of just pre-race dialogue. 
Like that, that's awesome. For a game in 2002, like they don't they don't like they don't even deal with this anymore. Like they don't even try. Like that would be just so awesome. Emulator, I can't have you do that right now. At least you're doing it during the race. Also, Johnny Be or uh Ken Schrader altered this game. Let's get into it. 26 laps. Starting dead last in the field. But at least we'll get a good start, which is nice. We're gonna need every bit of advantage, aggressiveness, and just uh just uh just roaming up to the front. I was running out of acronyms and words to say. That's not even a sentence. But we have to go. But, yeah, this track, I don't know why it's like this. I think Homestead's kind of the same way and is a flat track, so I guess maybe it's just like a flat track thing. I don't really know. But it's just, they just are just really difficult. So, uh, usually I would not advocate for setups, but I, for this track, I have to. I think, I think comment section will be okay with this. Oh, Jeff Green with wiggles back there. No yellow, just, just little wiggles. He's having uh, some uh, early onset Parkinson's apparently. Um, but, yeah, this one should be, I'm just, is there more? I, oh, just stack ups. Why are we going 130 miles an hour in turns three and four? What? That's the kind of shit I don't need. That always keeps happening every race now. Happened at Daytona, happened at Rockingham. And it just affects me getting up to the field. Will we have those things happen? And again, I don't need those. Look if I Shauna Robinson here for P33. Now we're kind of back into the rhythm or the zeitgeist of everything. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just... Throwing out words and hoping they make sense. But one of the tricks I learned is... The AI, well, the other reason why I go down below is also because it seems to be a little grippy or just helps turn the car. But also the AI weirdly check up in the middle of these corners. Not a lot, but enough. So I'm trying to keep the momentum built up by also just st not staying in there. By just staying out of their line. But yeah, it's... The only thing we have to worry about is where Mark Martin's running, because obviously he's the points leader, but I did not see him starting up at the front. Neither, uh, same with Jimmy Johnson, so I don't know where they're at. But I'm hoping we could just, you know, have a clean race, get a decent finish, and maybe not lose too much points to them. This is really the only track on the schedule where I'm really scared to run at, just because I know how tough it is. Maybe there's other tracks, too, that are going to probably be extremely difficult that I have yet to encounter. We already got an engine failure already. Per tradition, it seems like. There's always, like, one car that blows up during the race. With this race length. But, thank God we have those adjusted gear ratios in. Because, man, this thing just likes to go on the straightaways. At least off turn four. For whatever reason, I, I've done so many laps, I know this by now, by heart. But, the back straightaway, we don't carry enough RPMs versus the ones in, like, off turn four in the front straightaway. Don't know why, unless the front straightaway is just a little bit longer than the back straightaway. There might be something to it. Or something with that, because we definitely carry a lot more speed on the front straightaway than the back. So that is also interesting. What's also really interesting is that we are almost in the top half of the field. Hooray! My emulator's chugging. I don't think... For what... This is... What's really weird is... The emulator works fine... But when I have Streamlab OBS on, it doesn't like it. But when I stream Thunder 04, it has no problem. So does this game just render this game harder than Thunder 04? With the, with the, I, I don't understand that. I'm, I'm confused with that. It was kind of doing the same with Thunder 02. So I have no real explanation for that. Other than if I, maybe I should just change it to, to like default OBS and not Streamlabs OBS. And maybe that would fix it. Because it did seem to fix it. So I might have to do that. Which I don't think any of you guys are going to really notice any differences. Maybe the face cam might be positioned like a pixel or two off or something. But otherwise, it should be pretty much the same. But yeah, we're are doing exactly what I need to. We're getting up through the field nicely. The only, only other thing I'm worried about is just pit stops. Because that's always a gamble if we're going to have a good pit stop or not. So it's always just extra important to just try to get up through the field as quickly as possible. Just to mitigate any of that. Mark Marr not having a good day in P. 15, but he's about to get passed, so he's dropping off. He's choking. 
It's too early in the season, Mark. You can't be doing that. You gotta be consistent. I mean, that's why he hasn't won a championship. I know, shots fired. That was mean. I shouldn't be doing that to Mark. I like Mark. Me and him should share the same birthday. Mike Skinner is outrunning Mark Martin. What a timeline. Yeah, P14, done and gone. Same with Bill Elliott. Jimmy Johnson's back here, so as long as we just have a top 10 finish, I think we might be the new point leader, potentially. There's a strong chance it might be, because Marlon's back here as well. So, it's it's looking good. We're doing pretty much everything right, except for the AI stopping. That didn't help. They might pit this lap, so I'm going to stay a lane up just to be safe, and none of them pitted. So that was basically a wasted corner on my part. Damn the AI. I thought I I did practice. Oh, they did. They actually did. not Way in the back, but not at the front. I don't know what they're going to do when they're going to pit or not. So I'm going to try not to go all the way down the bottom like I usually do in turn three just to give myself a little bit of room. They didn't pit that lap either. So, all right. We're just going to just pass them then. Luckily, we had a good enough run the front straightaway to do that and allow that. And also, Casey Atwood just chilling in ninth. Ahead of Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson. We kind of sent it in that corner a bit, but we're fine. No contact. I don't even think I hit any cars minus the, the brake check thing early on, but we're doing everything right. We're going to be pitting on lap 13, so that's my plan. And then afterwards, we're just going to hope things go okay. Uh, Casey Atwood, I don't know what you're doing. I'm staying a lane up to be safe. He doesn't pit again. I'm being extra cautious, and for really no reason, because it hasn't benefited, so. Yay, we're going to get by him, though. Hooray to front straightaway speed. Yeah, I'm pinning this lap. I'm going to park the bus here in turn three so I can keep it on the bottom lane. But yeah, standard four tire stop. Nothing to... Bill Elliott! You fucking idiot. This is what I mean about the AI just setting it down pit road because... I didn't... I couldn't have gone down there any more aggressively. And that just... Damn! Oh, and we stopped for Bill Elliott. Yeah. Why? Why, why did we have to stop in front of Bill Elliott? Me and Jeff Byrne just had synchronized pit road entry. That was cool. That pit stop's going to be a 16-4 right at the estimated time. We're just going to let Jeff Burton go. Go first. What? Yeah, this is why pit road is such a gamble and, and everything. We lost time because of that. And we also lost, well, now we're going to be aerodynamically at a disadvantage because Bill Elliott rammed into my ass. So, um, yeah, uh, I, I don't like any of that. Hopefully it doesn't affect the car too badly, and since... We're not the last group of cars to pit. We're going to at least cycle out in front of someone, I think. So, I don't know. We're just going to have to wait and see how this shakes up. Please don't tell me we're going to cycle out this far back. I mean, there is a lot of cars down pit road, so there's a chance for us to gain more spots. But that is just so much time. Game is chugging so badly. I need to stop using this fucking Streamlabs OBS with this emulator apparently because it just doesn't like to handle it. Yeah, we're cycle out 25th, 24th, so we lost 11 spots during that pit cycle. That's just riveting. I I don't even know what really to say to that other than that really freaking sucks. Believe uh, Robbie Gore, I'm sorry, but at least I mean all of them are still bunched up, so we're gonna make a lot of these back up pretty quickly, but that's just the hole we had to dig ourselves out of now, and we lost three seconds to the leader, or, or maybe two, I don't know, but yeah, now we're just going to have to try hard, extra hard now, just to get back to where we were running before. And that's why pit stops are such a gamble. Inside of Ward Burn for P18. That's Mark again, still having a very ho-hum day. Those will be a nice casual two spots equipped right there. P16. At least we're going to get the bare minimum of top 15 finish. To the inside of Cal Petty here, this will be for the top 15. I don't even think we're going to get a top 10 at this rate, which is sad. Again, I did like pretty much everything I could possibly do to run well. I don't even know. I, I, the picker didn't even do anything wrong. I don't know why we draw. I mean, I did a practice race, and some of the AI pit as early as, as lap ten, and I and I still cycled out in in better shape than this. So I can't explain that. It's not because it can't be because I pitted like two laps after them that put me this in that type of deficit. I it's. It's so hard to do practice races and truly anticipate what to expect because the pit cycles are always slightly different and I, I really sh can't afford to just stay out or pit early and then stay out longer on old tires because the car just falls apart so badly so it's like the only strat I can do and we were just on the bad end of it somehow, some way. I, I can't even explain it. 
Alright, cop to Bill Elliott. He has damage, so something happened to him at some point during the race. Don't know what exactly, but that's for P14. 12th is probably the highest we're going to get, so... That sucks. What a disappointing race. For how well it started off, and we were already up in like the top 13 before pit cycles really began. I thought a top 10 was for sure going to happen, but... The pit stop just kind of ruined it, and I don't know... I This is one of the weirdest instances where I lost time during the pit cycle for reasons I, I can't even really explain, because it's not like we had a slow stop. We did lose a little bit of time stopping for Jeff... Maybe it's all because of stopping for Jeff Burns and leaving period, we kind of, like, stopped too. So, maybe that cost me a few seconds, but I don't... That's, like, the only thing I can think of. So, I don't know. And again, those are just forces outside my control, because the AI has control, so I, I can't really do anything about that. Light flags out. No idea who's up at the front. It could be Dale Jarrett who started on pole, but... Yeah, what a... What a... We had so much momentum... We had so much just good fortune in the first half, and then it just all falls apart. The car is getting terrible to drive, which is why I did not want to pit early, because it would just not end well. We might have cycled out in front of some people, but the car's pace would have been so bad, we would have lost everything we would have gained by short pitting. So it just... I, I don't even understand. This is just the weirdest race I've had, which is the pit logic. I, I don't understand any of the how. I guess it's I guess it really is just because the AI... Dale Jared won. Good for him. I guess it's all because got in and out of pit road slow with the AI taking control of my car, which I can't control. So I, I, I can't even, I, I like, I even do anything wrong. I, I, I ran a pretty solid race and then the pit stop ruined it. So I don't know. What are they talking about? I started 43rd and worked my way up to 14th. How does that not, we need to make up any spots, dude. No, I did. I gained like 30, like what, 29 spots. That is that is gasolining at its finest. Alright, take a look at the finishing results. Dale Jarrett just dominated. Um, we did finish ahead of Mark, so we do get three points. I don't think that's enough to get the point lead. I don't even know where Sterling Marlin finished. He's in the top ten. Johnny Benson just eighth again. He That is three races where Johnny Benson's worst finish is 11. He's actually... My finish today was the worst I finished, but Benson's still, Benson's still worst finish is 11. I, Benson's worst finish is better than mine. Like, what is this? Um, but yeah, that's another amazing run. Ricky Craven just effortlessly sixth. Kansas with a good run. Same with Junior. Same with Newman. And Dale Jarrett led d the entire race. He led every lap. I, with pit stops, too. I, I, I don't even have words for that. That is unbelievable. That That is just diabolically fast. Um, I'm sure Marlon's going to have the point lead by a bit, but we might secure second possibly, or maybe we're still third, because I, I don't know. We're going to have to look at that and see what that's going to look like. Point situation, we're, damn, we're down to sixth. Mark Martin's still fifth. will be still ahead of us by two points. No, that, never mind. It is Dale Jr., the new point leader, by six over Marlon, nine over Dale Jarrett, 25 over Newman. And Johnny Benson just... Chilling 10th in the points, unbelievably. Ahead of Jeff Gordon. Wow. Rusty Wallace is back there. Ricky Rudd, 18th. I guess the points are still shaking up. It's still going to be a little all over the place. But, I, like I said, this season's going to be hard. I mean, Vegas is extremely hard. Um, but, yeah, this season, we're not going to win it by, like, a 1,000 points. So, I mean, it's, it's going to be... We're going to have to try hard this whole season... And just try to keep getting top 5, 10s, and 15s even. So, uh, I don't know what really more to say. Johnson's still the lap champion, but um, we still keep getting the weekly awards every race because we're fast and all charge it up, so that's funny. Well, that's basically it. We're just going to wrap this up. I'm going to practice at Atlanta and hope we can at least finish better at Atlanta than we did uh, at Vegas. Big shout out to my two, three Patreon supporters today for our Champ 15, Kamikaze Games, Bailey Care, Mexican League 1986, and Jason Homer for the support again. I appreciate what you guys do for my channel every single month. It does me a lot. It always goes a long ways with everything. So just, just thank you as always for the continued support. I will see you all at Atlanta, where hopefully our pick crew does not just completely, not even my pick crew, but my AI just doesn't slow me down. I, 
I, what I don't know what else to really anticipate. I mean, we're just got the really just hope it works out. I don't know. I was thinking about making the series like 25% races, but it seemed almost it, it kind of was easy though. So it's hard to find that right balance. I don't know. All right, we're just going to see what Atlanta provides. It, I don't know, but that's it. I'll do it for me. I'll see you all next episode. See you all later. And as always, have a good day, everyone.